Do you love JavaScript? Do you enjoy smashing moles? How about diving into the world of virtual reality? If you said yes to all three, then this video is for you. I opened Wonderland Engine and created a new project with VR template, easy peasy. So here's the deal. The big window in the middle is our scene, where the magic happens. The left side, that's where you'll find all the objects in the scene. On the right, we've got the details of whatever we've selected. And at the bottom, that's where all the files are chilling. See that play button at the top? Hit it and boom, you're in the game right in your browser. Want to go full VR mode? Just plug in your VR headset with a USB, select it and hit play. Fancy. All right, let's make this game happen. First, we're setting up some placeholders. Pick an object, open its mesh component and swap it out for a cylinder shape. Now hit G to move it around and S to scale it. Congrats, you've just made a mole. We'll also move the cube around and pretend it's the moles table. Scale up the floor so we have some room to work with. Now comes the fun part, coding. We want our mole to pop up and down like it's playing hide and seek. Head to the JavaScript folder, right click and create a new JavaScript component. Let's call it mole. Drag and drop that bad boy onto our mole object and open the script. This is the Wonderland Engine JavaScript template. We've got imports, an export class, a component name and properties for our variables. The start function kicks in when the game starts and the update function runs every frame. First, I added position A and position B as vector3 variables in the properties. These are the points our mole will move between. Save with Ctrl plus S, and you'll see those variables pop up in the engine. Copy the position A, move the mole to position B, and copy that too. Nice! To get our mole to pop up to position B over time, I brought in vector3 from the GL Matrix library, because who doesn't love a bit of math magic, right? Then, I set up the needed variables in the start function, and threw my lerp function into the update function. So each frame, the mole smoothly moves from current position to position B. Let's test it out. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, we don't want our sneaky mole just popping up. It needs to dive back down too, right? To make that happen, I created a function called schedule next move, which I called right at the start of the game. Here's what it does. First, it generates a random delay based on a maximum and minimum time, because who knows when the mole will strike next. Then, it toggles the mole's movement direction, up or down, and starts the lerping magic again. After that, it loops the whole thing using that random delay. In simple terms, I made the mole randomly decide when to switch directions, so it keeps you on your toes. Pretty nice. Now let's talk about the hammer. We want the mole to retreat back to position A whenever it gets whacked by the hammer. So, we'll create a placeholder for the hammer and attach it to the player's hand. Add a physics component to both the hammer and the mole. In the mole component, we'll add a physics collision event. Whenever the mole collides with another physics object, it'll trigger the on collision function. In on collision, we'll check if the mole is moving up. If yes, send it back to position A. And boom! Time for the score. I created a text object called score and another component named game status. I added a function to increase the score every time the mole collides with the hammer, triggered by the on collision event in the mole component. Sweet. Of course, we also need a high score because who doesn't love bragging, right? So I've added it with the same method. And just for fun, I borrowed a float score component from a previous project, Angry Birds anyone? calling it on collision with the mole, so that each time we smack a mole, a score will float up. Awesome. But wait, we need a way to reset the game. I added a timer that pauses the game when it runs out and pops up a game over panel. Click start, and it resets the score, timer, and gets the game rolling again. Perfect. Time to make things look pretty. I added a sky to our scene and tweaked the lighting. Then I opened Blender, and with my amazing 3D modeling skills, I crafted a stunning mole. I also made a hit animation for it, modeled the mole's table, and imported everything into Wonderland Engine. Put it all together, changed the text color, added animations, and threw in some sound effects for the mole's pop-ups and hits. Now let's check out the result.
a cool bonus. With WebXR and Wonderland Engine, we can make this work on any platform that supports a browser. It can even work on your toaster if it supports a browser. To play it on a PC, just add a collision component to the mole and throw in this cursor target code. Now clicking on the mole with your cursor triggers the same on collision function as the hammer. Done. We can now play on PC browser too. It was fun. Smashing moles is always fun. If you want to develop your own awesome games, then download Wonderland Engine today for free. You'll find the full code of this project on GitHub. Link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and join our Discord, where you can chat with other game developers and ask all the questions your heart desires. See you in the next video.